my name is Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today we're going to be pricking out the Sweet William seedlings that I sowed about three weeks ago. I sowed them at the end of July and it's now the middle of August. They're growing really well. So with seedlings what you get are um, the first seedling leaves which are the bottom ones here. I think they might be called cotyledons and then you get the first set of true leaves which are the next set of leaves that come. So if you've only got one set of leaves like this one, it's too early to prick that one out. You need to wait until it's got the first set or even second set of true leaves. The reason that I want to prick these out today is because I sewed them a little bit too heavily and they're very close together. And if you sew them too close together, then what happens is they start to reach for the light because they're being crowded out. And so what you get is leggy seedlings and they start to elongate. So it's best to prick them out or thin them out. So you can do one of two things. So you could just decide to discard this one and keep the tallest one, the strongest one, or you could keep the shorter one and get rid of the leggier one. But what you don't want is two seedlings growing really close together like this. So you need to put them on. You're probably thinking that it's really complicated, but it's actually not that complicated. You just have to be really delicate. And there is one definite rule that I always stick to, and that is never to handle the seedling by its stem. The stem, once it's damaged, if you squash it by accident or bend it a little too forcefully, it's broken and your seedling will either die or be prone to viruses and all sorts of other things so that seedling is useless so if you handle it by its true leaf then it can grow another leaf you haven't killed that particular plant uh, so always handle your tiny baby seedlings by their leaves and never by the stem the other good thing i'm going to do is show you what i use to um, pot on my seedlings. So I find a couple of things really useful. The first things that I find quite useful whenever I'm dealing with potting on are these um, two tiny little mini trowels here and I will link these um, in the description below. So go to the description below and you'll be able to find these little trowels if you fancy getting some but they're actually just really handy because they're small but you could equally use an old kitchen spoon or a knife. The other thing that I like to use um, are these little pokey things and um, these are like the little stakes that you get in plant pots when you buy plants sometimes and they're really small but I find these really useful and the other thing that you can also get quite easily are these dibbers and again I'll link those below if you like they come in like you know a pack of three different colors I like the pink one um, <laughs> but the dibbers are also quite useful I the reason the dibbers are more useful for like making a hole than anything else. Um, they're not particularly useful for levering things out because they haven't got a sharp end. I also want to show you what I'm going to pot on into. So first of all, we've got my trusty seed trays. Um, and it, it's really easy to pot on into these. I find these really useful. And the seedlings are so tiny at the moment that they'll be absolutely fine in these seed trays for a while. The other thing you can do is just reuse um, plant pots that you know you've bought plants in previously. I wouldn't use anything too big because the roots of your seedling um, like to be a little bit contained so don't you know use a pot like this for one seedling. You could put a couple in that pot definitely. If you want to you could just literally just pull out of this pot all the seedlings that you don't want and just leave the four or five that you do want. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I'm going to move mine on so they have fresh nutrients from the compost. Um, so you could use like these little pots that you buy other plants in and make sure you wash them out and make sure they don't have any slugs on them. And that's particularly important if you're going to use something like this, like annuals tend to come in these things here in the UK. Um, you know, when you buy some like bedding plants or something like that. And they're quite shallow um, and they're quite handy because they come in like, you know, six and they're quite robust. So I like them. Um, but what I would say is do be careful because with these, slugs and snails like to hide in these so make sure you brush them down or wash them i always give my trays a rinse when i'm you know reusing them it's good practice the compost i'm using today is the melcourt silver grow peat free compost and this it's not an ad and i 
feel like I'm always saying it, but maybe you haven't seen any of my previous videos before. So I'm just going to say that it's peat free, which is really important to me to preserve our peat bogs. Um, and I really like the structure of this particular compost and I've had really good results with it. So that's why I recommend it. It is not an ad though. And again, that is linked in the description below if you fancy taking a look and buying some yourself. Um, you can order it from that well-known online retailer. I'm just going to fill my trays with compost. What you need to do is make a hole in your compost tray. So you can use a pencil or a dibber, but you want to prepare a hole in the compost tray so that your roots don't get squashed as you plant them in. And I'm making a hole right down to the bottom because I want to make sure that none of my roots get damaged. So you could use a pencil or anything you like for that, or you could use your finger. Um, and then I'm going to use this tiny little stick here, but you could equally just use this um, trowel here just to get right down to the bottom and loosen things. That will work fine. Um, and then you, I need to do this so that you can see. So then you grab hold of the new leaves, the true leaves, and just sort of loosen the roots from the bottom and it, keep the soil attached and then you want to just plop it in what I'm not doing is pushing the soil down I'm just gently firming it around that seedling and I'm choosing from here the strongest little seedling so I'm going to take the one with the biggest leaves then I'm going to wiggle it free from the others so there's one I could use this one's too little so I'm not going to use that one or that one but this one's fine so can you see the little roots at the bottom here so I'm just going to ease them gently in and firm around it and then with this one just drop it in and then gently firm around it if you're reusing little pots like this then don't fill them right up to the top because otherwise when you water your seedling all the water will just go over the edges and it won't go down into the pot so give your pot a little tap to make sure there are no air gaps and then you're good to go so treat these little pots in exactly the same way make a nice big hole for your roots and then lever out some of your seedlings this one here so can you see how long that root is already this is why you need to put them on so then with the tray you do exactly the same thing Once you've potted on all the seedlings that you want don't forget to label them and then we're just going to water them with a very gentle sprinkling from um, a garden hose or from your watering can you know try not to squash your new little seedlings too much but now they're at this stage you don't need to bottom water them anymore you can just overhead water them and they will grow up nice and strong and we'll be able to plant them out in a few weeks and then they can overwinter in the ground 
your new compost is going to feed your seedlings for a week or two um, but I would definitely you know to encourage lots of new leafy growth and strong roots um, definitely start feeding them in a week or two and um, you can just do that by adding a liquid feed to your watering can and uh, you know giving them a weekly feed. I hope you found this little update useful and now you know what to do with your sweet William seedlings you can treat any seedlings this way in fact I would treat any seedlings this way so once they get to this stage then do pop them on to give them their best chance possible. Uh, good luck with all your seedlings I hope you've enjoyed this and it's been useful and interesting and thank you so much for watching I'll see you all next time um, but uh, I'm waffling. Hi everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today we're going to be pricking out our Sweet William seedlings. These are seedlings that I sowed... <laughs> when did I sow them? 